all throughout the journey of system design, you will be constantly looking into one thing. That is, how can you improve the performance? How can you make it better? And what are all the different ways that you can do it? So naturally, you need to be aware of some of the concepts that you can talk about or you can even consider. And this is where you will start to get into topics which might seem a little new to you. And indexing is one of them. So in this video, we are going to briefly talk about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. As we have been discussing up till now, what is our final goal? We want to scale to a million users, correct? And what does that mean? It means that your data will simply keep on growing. And you want that you are able to retrieve the data fast whenever you need it, correct? So handling data at such a large scale, it can really become a challenge. You just cannot rely on that, okay, I will have a fast internet speed. I will have a very fast server. I will have a lot of RAM. My hard disk will be very fast. All these technologies, they help you up to a certain extent. But over here, you're limited by the hardware. You want to implement algorithms and techniques by which you can retrieve this data in a faster way, even if you have limited resources. So before we start getting into indexing, let us do a quick recap about what all have we already discussed. So we have talked about why system design is essential and where will you find it in your career path. Then we discussed about what is scaling and why is it necessary to build a system that is huge. After that, we started discussing some of the most fundamental concepts. We know about a client server model. We talked about a load balancer. We talked about caching and its eviction methods. We also talked about databases in general. And after that, we did an exercise where we started creating some of those diagrams. How do you link up all of these different components and what does your diagram start to look like? So if you're new to all of this, I would highly recommend you to stop this video right over here and look at my previous videos first. Because while studying all of this, we have also been relating all of this to a real life example of a bookstore. And that makes things easier to understand and you will remember them forever. Because you see it in a store and you are able to map all of those things. So once again, let us start off things with a real life problem. Let us say you go into a bookstore and your bookstore just looks like this. What is missing currently? It is right now in a mess, right? If you arrive at this bookstore and you're looking for a certain book, you do not know where to look. You cannot just go through entire books one by one, right? Sure, if it is a very small bookstore, yes, you can ask the cashier or you can locate the book yourself. But if this bookstore is huge, then how do you look up that book? So to solve that problem, we use the concept of indexing. And indexing is nothing but marking or categorizing all of your data. So you would have seen it in a bookstore or a library, right? You would have all of these racks and all of your books are categorized with these indexes, correct? So now you know that if you have to look at a book that starts with A, you can go into this aisle. For a book with B, you can go into this aisle. This is saving lot of your effort, right? You do not look through the entire bookstore. Similarly, just like this, you could also have indexes based upon the book genre as well. This is a horror section, this is a comedy section, and this is a fiction section. That is known as indexing. To give you an even simpler example, you have seen indexing every time around you. For example, you have this book, right? And if you have to search something, you cannot literally just go into every page, correct? What does every book do? Every book will have some kind of an index or a marking that will tell you that, okay, if you have to look at this particular topic, go on to this page. So you are indexing all of the topics or all of the data that is available to you. Now, if you have to look through all of this data, you know this page number, you go here directly and then you get your data. That is exactly what is happening in a database as well. And when it comes to system design, you have a database available and it has a lot of data stored. Sure, we talked about caching where you store all of the frequent data that you need but often you would have to look in your database as well. So if there is no concept of indexing, what will happen? You have all of your data stored in this table, right? And if a user makes any query without indexing, what will you do? You will go over each of the row and then you will determine that, hey, this is my result. So to do it, what are you doing? You are traversing through each of the row in your database and that is taking up a lot of time. 
And to be very honest, this looks like a brute force approach. And we all know that brute force approach is generally not scalable. You cannot expect that you will have a lot of users and then for every user, you are doing the scan of your database again and again. So we need to take some kind of advantage of what do we already have. For example, I have this table with me, right? Now, each of these row, they are somewhere in my memory, correct? So if I try to map all of these memory locations with my index somewhere, what I mean to say is that I create a separate table that is maintaining all of the memory locations corresponding to each of the index. Now what will happen? If I make a query, I know that I have to scan only one column instead of all the rows. And this one column can then redirect me to the exact memory location that I want. So what did we achieve? Just by adding indexing to my database, I do not have to scan my entire database. And this is saving me a lot of time my query becomes faster and the disk load also reduces a lot. So it is very clear that indexing a database can improve the performance drastically. And if you think about it, how can a indexing be implemented internally? You would have all heard about B trees, correct? With a B tree, you can specify that, okay, all of the values smaller than a particular node can reside in my left child and all the values larger can reside in my right child. So, Try to think, you have seen SQL queries where you say, okay, where my certain field is between these two values. What is happening internally? Internally, you navigate through your binary tree and then determine that, okay, I will find my required data only in this block. And that helps, right? You are looking at only a small section of the data. You have churned out so much of this tree. And this is why a knowledge of all these data structures is very, very helpful when you come up with all of these implementations. Now, when it comes to indexing, there are a lot of different ways by which you can index all of your data. Think like this. If you're in a bookstore and you have to index all of your books, either you can do them in an alphabetical order or you can do them in an order of all of the genres or you can also do them by categorizing in form of all the authors. So all of these are different ways. You have to pick a way by which the customers are able to easily find your data. And it all depends on the type of the bookstore you are operating. Similarly, when it comes to computer science, the first type of indexing that you can do is primary index. And that is very, very naive, but very, very helpful. It is most commonly used for scenarios where you have only one key as identifier. So try to think you have your bank records. So your database will look something like this, correct? And this is a very good example where date can be your primary key. Whenever you're looking up transactions, what is the most common query? You would see that, okay, tell me all the transactions that happened on a particular date. So instead of scanning through your entire table, what you can do is you can just scan the date column, which you have already indexed. And then you can return that, okay, for this date, all of these were your particular transactions. This speeds up our query so much, right? The next type of indexing is secondary index. It simply means that along with the primary index, you also take the help of one more column. So it generally means that you take the help of two columns to then arrive at your answer. And when you extend this concept, it becomes composite indexing. Composite indexing simply means that you take the help of multiple columns to arrive at your answer. Just think like this. You have an online merchant like Amazon and you see that you have all of these filters available. You can choose by the price. You can choose by the brand. You can choose by the fabric type. You can choose by the size. You just cannot rely on one primary index. You cannot say that, okay, I will have an index just for the price. That way your database will keep on running all of these queries. But with a composite index, you are indexing on all of these fields as well. And when the customer selects, okay, I want a size five of this fabric of this brand, then you get all of your results so quickly. So what I'm trying to say is that you cannot have a specific way that I will index my data in this way. It is all dependent upon the use case. You could also be designing a system that simply captures all of the access logs that appear when someone visits a website.
Now, all of these logs, they are quite homogeneous. So, if you have to index all of these, you could use a hashing based index technique. What it will do is, it will take up this access log, use a hash function, and then generate a sample bucket where you can put your data. Now, when you have to query it, again use the hash function, and then you can look up that particular bucket. So, this way, just depending upon the scenario, you have to choose which indexing technique to use. Because choosing a wrong indexing technique can even slow down your system, or it can simply skew up things and your performance will go down. So, every time, just ask your interviewer and understand the data. What does your input look like? And only then decide that yes, you will use this particular concept of indexing your data. And there is no certain way. There are no defined methods. You can index your data in any way that you like. Your main goal is that the retrieval should be fast and you should be able to scale up. So always be careful about it. And when we talk about being careful, it is also natural that we talk about some of the challenges that you might encounter when you introduce this indexing concept in your design. Over here, I have a very basic design. I am doing a query and I have this index table with me. Notice that my retrieval speed has increased. I am able to quickly look up the data. But there is one very obvious flaw with this design. What did you have to do when this index table was not there? When you were writing new data, you would simply add a row and you're good to go, correct? But since you have this index also in place, you will have to perform two write operations. You will have to write in this and then you will have to check your index once again and then update the information accordingly. So you are writing two times and the complex your indexing is, more the number of write operations you will need. For example, if you are using a secondary index or a composite index, then you have to perform more write operations. And more write operations mean more load on your database. So that is one thing that you should be mindful about. And what is the next most obvious thing that you can see over here? Earlier, I only had this table. And now I have one more table to deal with. This table, this does not come for free. It is taking up extra space. And more complex your indexing is, more space you need. And this space comes at a cost. So you have to decide that by adding this index and taking on more costs, am I giving that much output? So these are all the calculations that should always come into your mind. The problems just do not end over here. Similar to the way when we were writing more data in our database, you could also have to delete entries in your database. So when there was no index present, you could simply get rid of the data. But when you have this index in place, you have to make sure that you're cleaning up some of the unused indexes as well. So whenever you do a write operation or a delete operation, you have to scan your index table again and you have to maintain that overhead. You have to make sure that your index table is also updated. So these are all the challenges that will keep on coming when you introduce indexing in your design. And I always say that Whenever you are introducing a new component, do it when it is required. Think like this. You are creating a design that is collecting data for all the students and faculty in some kinds of an institute. Now, you know that students can be so many and that is where indexing can be helpful. You can index them based upon each of the class. But do you really need indexing for all the faculty? Your faculty is pretty limited. So, if you apply indexing over there, you are simply wasting a lot of your space and you have to maintain that overhead of maintaining all of this index as well. So whenever you are encountering questions like these, always keep on talking to your interviewer and let them know that this is why you are introducing something. One mistake that often people do is they will just throw in concepts what they know about. You should not do that. Just because you know something, it is not necessary that it is required because an unneeded concept can actually slow down your performance. A lot of this will become even clear when we start creating diagrams of some sample models. So while going through the video, did you face any problems or tell me what index patterns have you seen? What are some of the challenges? And I will be happy to discuss all of it. It will become a really interesting discussion. 
And as a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming video. Until then, see ya.